How's it going everyone? So in front of me I've got the amazing Yamaguchi Rebel Tech Cable. So Cable as a character I'm not the most familiar with. I know obviously he's an X-Man and the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Is it the real Jean Grey or the clone Jean Grey? That's something I always forget about. Um, but otherwise, yeah, he's familiar to me because of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 specifically. But let's take a look at the packaging and then we'll go through the figure. So pretty standard packaging look for uh, Rebel Tech side of things. So you've got the window display with the figure bit of the view of the optional parts his arm by the way looks really cool even displayed like this so if you did want to keep it in its box then yeah you got a pretty good view of him and you get a, just a picture of cable there and the usual sort of iconography and some kind of background art and going to the side here's some more artwork and logos not that much really uh, and the reverse side is a bit more interesting with some more posed uh, photos of him uh, with some quotes I guess from some of his uh, comic appearances uh, and then yeah Pretty colourful and dynamic looking stuff going on on the back. Another view of the optional parts that are included with this set. Um, that's really about it. And then on the other side, some more photos. And then the top and bottom I'll show you too. The top. And then the underside. So also inside you can see the backing. The background of that is also another artwork of Cable. And I'm sure the flaps also have some sort of artwork going on. But usually they kind of come from various sort of comic uh, appearances of the character it's not really consistent with one artist or anything like that so let's get this figure open and we'll go through it so here's the figure with all its optional parts now i'm going to go through the optional parts first so if you do want to see the figure just skip ahead a little bit so starting with the stand and the three bits that i've just kind of placed in there so you get three silver joints like this so these two of them are actually going to be used for the two big guns on the left here and then one i guess you could say is a spear uh, and then the stand all rebel tech stands all rebel tech figures come with a stand pretty much so i've assembled this already so you get the jaws here and then the actual shaft and then the base itself so the base has multiple holes so for you can so you can place this shaft any way you want so it's very similar to the nendoroid ones i'm not a huge fan of Robotech stands to be honest because a few of them have broke on me um but you know i'm glad they still give you one at least then you get this little bit here so this is just to move the eyes in either of cables faces so you've got one bit that sticks out at the top there and then one that just well it kind of bends and then the other one just sticks out it's not the easiest thing to do to be quite honest i would try and show you later but it's yeah it's really not that easy then you get the hands so you get the two fists already attached to him and then you get trigger fingers so one for each hand so one right hand which is all gloved and then the other one which is for his cybernetic arm now i'm not going to get the, the technical terms right for cable because again, I'm not that familiar with him in terms of uh, character law. But yeah, this is the standard uh, hand that you get for the trigger. It's very easy to actually equip this with either of his guns. Normally, I don't like those hands, but for this figure, it's quite simple. Then the other pair of hands you get are scrunchy hands. So the gloved hand is a bit more scrunched up than the cybernetic one. Can I show you that there? But both are made and sculpted quite nicely. I'm really in love with his cybernetic hand and arm in general, for the most part. But yeah, that's cool. Then you get an alternate face. So the alternate face is just with him being a little bit more angry. Mouth, you can see, well, the teeth you can see a little bit. Uh, and I mentioned before, the eye you can move. So if we see here, same with the default head as well. So you just plug that bit in here and then you articulate. Now, I found this really, really tricky because I don't think the eye is actually centered so what you can see now is probably just a white eye like so so it's, it's really really finicky to deal with that so it wasn't the best thing about this figure then you get with this alternate head is the uh, eye effect part which is in its like active mode and you can just take that off by gently pulling it like so and you just get a hole there and it's just on a peg and you can swap this with the default head as well then it just comes with two extra pouches for left leg and right leg just on a simple peg that you apply to his thighs. And I'll show you that later. So you can either put that there or you can use the gun holsters. So you get two of these as well. And you go this way around and the gun is just placed in into this peg here. And I'll show you that now actually as we move on to the guns. So there's two handguns. Let's call them handguns. Just a simple silver, but a nice looking silver like so. Both guns are the same. But like I said, they look pretty good. So this is the other side. And I'll show you the front and back on both of them. So his holster orientation should actually be this way around. So you can see the peg is slightly above 
the two handles you could call them and then the gun you just kind of peg in like so and that's the correct orientation for them so this assault rifle i'm gonna call it that um is quite cool i didn't actually expect it to transform essentially that's what it does it transforms and it combines with the other gun as well the great grenade launcher you could say um but it looks pretty good as well again it's sculpted nicely just like the handguns were but it's just a plain kind of gunmetal gray color scheme there's not really much else to it a little bit of silver trims and detailing uh just the, these kind of bits here uh this bit here on both sides is on like a metal kind of peg you could say so if it does come out uh, i'll try and take it out but if it does fall out you could just slot it back in it should be quite easy it has happened to me before uh, but it, this does turn into a long rifle so what are you got to do with this hopefully i can remember this so long rifle you got to take out this scope bit here and then you turn that around this way around and plug it into the front that's step, step one and then you flip these over on both sides like so and then this back bit here you flip and that's it and then this is where we'll hold on either position with a long rifle or as the assault rifle i'll oh, actually grab that hand now because it's quite easy uh, to kind of put it in so hopefully it's easy now yeah there we go quite simple i don't really need to fidget with these fingers too much this is actually pretty hard plastic uh, for the hands by the way so yeah it fits in snugly for this gun anyway and looks great so that's the long rifle mode and then you can combine this with the grenade launcher so let's talk about the grenade launcher first and then i'll show you the combined mode um i probably should take the hand off to make it easier later on so moving on to the grenade launcher then so this is how it is in its default state well that was upside down so this is how it is in its default state um again similar sort of gunmetal gray going on with a little bit of silver detailing and then the gold uh, on the revolver part as well so it's a revolver grenade launcher uh, i believe it is um but this is how this looks you can see here actually eagle eye people is i've put a little bit of tissue paper there now when i do place this in the trigger hand and then for his arm this is kind of heavy actually both his guns do end up having a little bit of weight to it um, and then this joint actually kind of came apart a bit too easily so it, it would stay in its hand and then it would just kind of fall apart so what i've done i've had a little bit of tissue paper there because it just kind of gives it a little bit more friction so it doesn't really fall apart as well it hasn't fallen apart for me that that easily for me so try that if that does become a problem for you I'm going to leave it there for now as well but otherwise yeah it doesn't actually come with that tissue paper so what we're going to do is combine this with the long rifle so you turn this into the long rifle i think it is something like that let's let's just kind of work it through so you've got to take this apart now as well so the front part comes off like this so let's just kind of put it down to the bottom um i'm going to change the camera a bit just so you guys can see so you've got the first part down there uh, and then this bit sometimes can be a bit annoying but take the either side of the revolver bit off so you've got this side here and then oh, the center bit uh, like so put that down there and then take off the other side of the roller bit here and then the back part like so you're gonna have to take the handle here i'm just gonna put the handle i'll take that off for the time being as well so you got those this, this is how it is when you take it all apart so to assemble the big combo gun let's call it that um so you got the long rifle as i did here so i'm going to take the front part off again this actually combines to i believe it's this section combines to the front like so i might do it the wrong way around if not i'll just quickly swap it um just turn that around so here we've got the scope at the top and then this goes in like so then i'll get to the other front part which goes in something like this now i'm doing it in different order than the instructions say but you'll get the same result the back bit is the bit that I find a bit fiddly, so this kind of needs this bit here needs to kind of sit here and then sandwich between the barrel. So it goes something. I'll do it this way around. So you got kind of sockets going on here. Got to do it this way, like so. I believe it is. And then this goes. You can see this peg here sticking out, hopefully. And then that goes into this one on my left thumb. So hopefully that can work. So that seems to go in fine. And then you just got to sandwich it with the other one on the other side should be relatively simple if it's fiddly then i don't i don't blame you for uh, not struggling it's a word but it can be fiddly at times so then that's how that looks and then finally this piece here we just plug into 
this side right here. So this will be held uh, and with both arms actually, so predominantly with his right hand here and then his left arm uh, for this bit to stabilize it as well. So it looks pretty, pretty awesome once it's combined. Um, it's not the biggest of effort. Once you figure out how to do it, it's actually you know, pretty much a breeze to do. This bit can sometimes move up and down, but it's not a big deal. But I think it looks really, really great once it's combined. And once you have this uh, equipped on the figure itself, yeah, it looks it looks awesome. It, it really, really looks awesome. So yeah, I was quite surprised with this. I didn't realize that the guns would kind of transform into, say, the long rifle and then combine as well. So that's a really cool, uh, neat thing that I didn't realize. Really, really cool. Now I've spoken about his cool guns, but now let's talk about the actual figure itself. So I'm going to bring it forward just a little bit. So from just straight up looking at him, he looks really awesome. I haven't had a Rebel Tech figure for a good while. Uh, I can't remember which one was the last one I actually opened Gambit, but I never did a video on him. But I really like what they've done with this cable. His sculpt looks so, so sick. Like it, it, the muscles are great, especially his torso. I really like what's going on there. Um, cybernetic arm, of course, looks really, really great. I just want to give you a closer look at this. It's actually something that basically uh, swayed me into buying it. Originally, I was going to give this a pass just because I'm not that attached to the character. You know, everyone uses him more versus Capcom 2. You might be familiar with him uh, from the you know, 90s cartoon and I guess the comics, obviously, as well. But, you know, I was going to give this a pass. But this guy, he looks really, really amazing in 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 person. Um, Obviously, they've changed his costume just a little bit. So he's not got the yellow uh, underpants that Cyclops might have had because this costume is pretty much uh, an adaptation of Cyclops as being, you know, Cyclops' son and all that. Um, I like what they've done. I like that decision. Normally, I don't like getting rid of underpants, especially when it comes to, say, Superman. I think underpants make that kind of costume. But for this guy, the yellow pouches and the belts uh, around his thighs and stuff break it up enough that I don't miss the yellow underpants for him. I think in modern comics, anyway, he doesn't really have that. Um, plus, also, he's got the bare arm now and then the glove here. Didn't always have that in the comics. And then his cyber arm, cybernetic arm, would sometimes be a little bit different in the comics as well. I think sometimes he had a glove on his left hand. So, yeah, there's, there, there are blatant differences for what um, Amazing Yamaguchi Robotech are doing here versus what we've seen before. But in general, yeah, this figure looks really great. The, the new costume looks great. And I want to talk about the texture as well, because this texture, again, I really like it. It feels great in the hand and it looks great. It makes this figure really, really stand out. The textured effect in a lot of modern day superhero costumes does bother me in general. I feel like all these superheroes are going to the same tailor to get their costumes made. Uh, and that bothers me, especially in, say, TV and film. Um, I guess with something like X-Men, which I guess he, he would count, you know, they might actually have the same person making the costume. So it would make sense that the, the material would be the same. But when I say, you know, I'm going to go off a tangent here, but when I was playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, everyone had the same textured costume and it just made no sense to me. It looks good, but it, it just made no sense that every texture was the same. So that textured look, which we see a lot now, does get to me in certain, uh, I guess, in-world logic. It just doesn't make sense to me. But, you know, that's TV film. And I, I have to say, I like the way that they've used it for cable. Honestly, this guy looks super good. I'm just gonna show you his boots as well because I always forget to show the boots. And I'll show you the backside properly more. But yeah, in general, this guy does look very, very good. Uh, you might be able to tell as well, he's got similar sort of stuff going on with him in terms of articulation. That's it, Captain America, had, which I have done a video of before. So I could keep going on a bit more about the way he looks. He does look great. Uh, and before I quickly go into the articulation, yeah, you can see you know, the X emblem, he's got three of them. So two here, one here, and then he's got the grenades going down here and then his pouches, which I'll talk about articulation in just a second. So yeah, he looks pretty solid. Honestly, it looks really, really solid. So I'm, I'm, I'm not regretting picking him up at this point. So let's go through the articulation and then I'll show you some stuff uh, equipped with him as well. So articulation, we'll start from the top. He can look up. Now, most Robotech figures have really generous uh, amount of looking upwards and then looking down with the neck as well gives him a really generous amount as well so you've got the neck movement which is really really uh, quite impressive and quite cool um, again quite generous is what Robotech tend to do with a lot of their figures I'm going to try and show you both arms now if joints come off that's kind of a feature with Robotech at this point if you have got quite a few of them you expect that now if this is new to you this brand is new to you this manufacturer is new to you you might have some frustration, but it's not all 
lost with this. So his left arm moves up like so, and this is the one that I have a lot of trouble with. Um, so both actually have some sort of pad on it. So here you've got the yellow armor pad, and then on the left arm, his shoulder acts the same way. It's on a uh, ball joint at the back of the shoulder. So you can see it goes all the way up and then around as well, which is great. But then with this one, this will come off. So when it comes off like that, you just plug it back in. I tend to have this issue more with the right arm, whereas on the left cybernetic arm, it kind of pops off like so. And I want to show you that actually, because this used to always freak me out. And when it first happened, because I'm used to this being on a ball peg. So I thought I just snapped it, but actually it's just on a ball joint. It comes off quite easily for me that I would have hoped moving forward. I know it might increase the cost is just add a magnet. Just have this magnetized because if this is on a ball joint and this is magnetized here, I just think it would be a bit more of a snug fit and it would still give us the articulation that we're looking for. Just an idea. Um, he doesn't have any twist here. So this is just the, like the pad It's on a little peg here. Same on this side as well. Sometimes it will come off. If it comes off, then I'll show you. If not, no big deal. Then we'll go over to the elbow. Now, it's just we'll also want to pause there for a bit that with Rebel Tech figures, they're not so straightforward like Figma and SH figure arts where it's straightforward motions. Sometimes you've got to kind of swivel a bit to get the full range of bend. So here you can see this is the full range of bend, but sometimes it, you know, if you don't bend it enough or swivel it enough, like sit there, you're going to get trapped at this point here. It's okay. You just got to get used to how Rebel Tech figures work. It's not for everyone and it can be a bit too fiddly. It's one of those, once you master it, it, it can give you, it can pay off. It can pay off quite nicely. Let's go with the hand, like so. I've actually not put this hand in snugly because the fist was, uh, the joint was really, really tight. So hopefully it doesn't snap, but you can twist and pivot and rotate. Oop, so then there goes the arm. I'm gonna leave the arm off for now because it does come off a bit easy for me. Similarly, you got to bend on this one as well and then the rotation there and then same with the fist. So usually I wouldn't show you both arms, but because his are a bit different, it's worth showing. Um, and then, of course, I did show you that, well, it kind of just happened on its own. But yeah, you've got the, I guess, let's call it butterfly kind of thing, which happens there. It can come off a bit easier on this side. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to happen on the left side, but mine is like, it's just stuck at the moment. And I've tried to get it to work. It just doesn't move right now. Um, but I'm pretty sure it is the same. You can kind of see the cuts going on. Um, but I really like it, actually, because the way his suit is made as well, you actually don't notice, unless you look super closely, that that's it was going to give you that functionality. So again, it's really, really well made combined with the way it looks and plus the articulation. They've really hidden that nicely. Then with the crunch, he bends down like so and backwards and you can lean, twist, twist with the bottom as well. His abs, by the way, are really solid. Like I, I, they're sculpted really well, but once you twist as well, it's just, it feels great to really articulate this guy. Like it's fun to toy around with. Then we get to the pouches here. So this is very similar to what Captain America and I think Batman as well had going on. So you get a little bit of uh, joint uh, articulation here with a, a ball joint right there. Unlike Captain America, he does have a belt that goes around. Captain America's was plain. I prefer this look. It still, you can take these off if you really wanted to. And he still has a sick looking costume. So let's put that back. The others just kind of stay flush there. Now the legs are tricky again in terms of that they're not straightforward like other figures you do have to play around with them to get you know a very wide range of motion because if you just wanted to go up then you might be like oh is that is that all he does that's you know that's worse than marvel legends or something but no 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 he he, he can you just got to play around with it a bit i am going to play around with this right now to show you that but just to be warned again for me the leg does pop off in a couple of places so here uh, at the thigh and then sometimes at the crotch and then sometimes at his uh calf twist as well so let's just show you so if you twist it up like so you can get the splits but you gotta put the effort in to get it so there we go okay come off at that joint easy to do just squeeze it back in like so so you can get him into a flying kick pose you just gotta put the effort in and it will pay off quite nicely so i've left his arm off so here we go let's go with like He's just going to jump kick someone. Looks perfectly fine. Captain American can get into the same pose just as easily as well. They have the same sort of articulation going on with the legs. So that's the upper por portion of his legs. Let's go down to his uh, knee to just show you that and then finish this off. So I showed you the knee. It just bends like so. Same sort of thing uh, with Captain America again. And then he has a twist at the boot. This is on a ball joint because 
it did come off earlier on for me. Same thing again with Captain America. And then the ankle. I'm not a big fan of the way this looks, to be honest. It, it's got too much gap going on. Uh, and then you've got the whole twist and everything. And then the toe bend, like so. I mean, I've showed you that uh, gap, but yeah, it's good articulation all around. Um, but yeah, like I said, you've got to put in a lot of effort to really get this guy into poses that you want. By the way, I didn't mention this before, but I know that with a lot of Robotech Marvel figures, especially say like Spider-Man, getting them into just a standing kind of position, he's actually not that hard. He's probably easier to do uh, than even Captain America. And from the Marvel stuff I've owned so far, this was the easiest one to get that looked good in a standing, pure natural standing pose, whereas Spider-Man was tricky to do and he didn't look that great in that. Uh, and even Wolverine didn't look so great. But Cable, Cable looks fine, uh, you know, to, to, to get it in that pose. So it's, yeah, it's a good thing as well. But that really covers his articulation. I'm going to now swap a couple of parts, um, just to give you a look on that. Uh, but they'll be roughly done. I'll have better footage of this later on. So let's show you the pouch quickly. Nothing special, really. That just goes into the thigh here. Comes off a little bit easy for me, but yeah, it is what it is. Then I'll actually show you the holsters. So you just peg it in like so. That's the correct way to do it. And the same goes for the other side. Then let's have him ha hold that big gun. Since I've already combined it, let's have him hold it. By the way, um, I have had the problem before. When you do take off his hands, uh, just be careful with them. Some of my joints were a little bit stiff. And in the past with Robotech, they have snapped, um, which is unfortunate. So just kind of warm them up. Breathe on them if you really have to. But it's going to be better for you in the long run because you don't want to accidentally snap a joint. Um, like I mentioned, the fist on the cybernetic arm was f quite tough to, to get out. So breathe on it if you really have to, honestly. Like, it's your own figure, so don't worry about it. Just don't don't be disgusting, is what I'm saying. Uh, let's grab his trigger hand. So I mentioned, actually, by the way, uh, it was with this bit here. When you have the original grenade launcher, I had tissue, tissue paper in it. So with this one, I don't need it because it's molded in. Whereas with the grenade launcher, I had to have tissue paper for extra stability. Now, as I mentioned before, this is now combined, so it's going to be a lot heavier, which does pose a little bit of problem with um, holding uh, with balance of the figure. What I would do, actually, let me take that off and put the hand on first because it's a lot more sense. So because it's quite heavy, naturally, the balance of the figure is going to be a bit ruined as well. Skipping that quickly, actually, and pausing there. When you do swap the hands again, just beware of where the ball peg is because it's not a straight in. With this, say this is a trigger hand. Look where you're going with this because again, you don't want to snap the joints because getting new ones can be a pain. So yeah, just be gentle as you can because you don't want to snap the peg and you don't want to break it at the, the joint itself as well. So it has happened before to me and to other people out there. Um, and I can't stress it enough. They, it's really disheartening when it does happen. Let's carry on and then put the hand in, the gun in, sorry. So what was I saying before? Okay, I actually can't remember. But in terms of balance, I think that was that's what it was. Uh, because he's quite heavy now with the gun, he's gonna maybe topple over a bit if you got him in you know pretty like, natural pose. I'm kind of keeping my hand in just in case. Um, but you're not really gonna keep him like that. You're gonna have him posed and then holding it with the other arm which I'm not going to do for, for the sake of time, but I've got some cool footage of it later. So when he's holding this gun and then he brings out, you know, his other arm to hold it here, for example, you can see how badass this guy would look. And then with that cybernetic arm coming in the front as well, just really, really intimidating look going on with him. And of course, you can switch this out. You can go back to the grenade launcher gun or you can go and sorry, the grenade, grenade launcher gun and then the assault rifle and have him dual wielding, or you can have him dual wielding pistols. You know what? Let's just have him have one pistol in one hand. Here, his arms come up here. Um, let's swap that out quickly too. So again, watch where the joint is. Just go straight this way. It's not. It's a bit more angled even. Like so, let's put the gun in. There we go. I'm gonna attach the arm back, like so. So again, this guy looks badass. So yeah, this guy looks badass once you've got his guns and stuff attached to him there. He's fallen off because of the balance, but 
yeah, it re really comes together once things are attached to him. I haven't shown you his head, so I'm going to swap that as well. So let's take that off. So that comes in two sections, lie him down. So you've got the back part of his head, the mullet, let's call it that. It's not really a mullet, but yeah. And then the main head. So you can just take this off and swap it with the active eye part. But I'm not going to do that for now. It's really straightforward. I showed you how to do it. Grab the back part of the head again. Put that in here. Oops, sorry, wrong way around. And then line it up. There's a click and his head goes on. And then we go. We've got the alternate head with the eye as well. So you can see his white, whited, whited out eyes because of the, uh, the uh, tweak that I did. So yeah, this figure looks really good once you've got him all posed up, ready to go. And yeah, once you equip the stand as well, you've got some cool options uh, to have him like mid-flight or something or leaping and whatever, whatever. Um, really, really kind of great options with this guy. If you've got the other Rebel Tech figures, then yeah, I'm sure he'll look great with those. And speaking of, let's bring out Captain America right now just for the sake of it. By the way, obviously I've just moved his leg position. He stands at around 17 centimeters. This guy is tiny in comparison. He, is, he was about 15, 15 and a half, something like that. So yeah, Cable is a much, much bigger figure overall. By the way, I didn't show you actually that the pegs on the back. So he's got a socket right here that you can plug the stand in and two others or various others. So you can put his guns and such there. So I'm going to show you that. All you got to do is grab one of the spare joints that you're given. And all you got to do is plug it in, say here. On the other side, there's the same joint there. Up to you. And then you just got to plug it into the back like so. It might be the wrong way around, but just for the sake of illustration, plug it into one of the sockets. Quite tight, but you should be able to get it in. So I'm not going to put it all, put it all the way in, but that's how it's going to be roughly. It won't go all the way in. It's still going to have that protrusion at the back. So it will stick out a bit and it might look odd from say side angles, but from an angle like that, it looks fine. So you can do the same thing again with the grenade that I've kind of put apart now. But you can do the same thing there. You can do the same with his pistols as well. Actually, no, you can't do the same with his pistols. I lie. His hand came off. Don't worry about that. But yeah, you can do the same with the grenade and then have them both equipped while he actually wields his pistols. And then he's on a stand, for example, leaping through the air. So on and so forth. So many different possibilities with this guy. It's great. So I said I was going to sleep on this figure and I'm glad I changed my mind because Cable has turned out really well. Yamaguchi has done a great job on this figure overall. You know, there are still the typical Robotech issues, but they're not as bad as they have been in the past for me personally. And they can still be frustrating for newbies, but I've come to accept it at the same time. Um, there's some paint issues as well that I don't really talk about so much, but they're really minor to be honest. But in general, yeah, it's a really fantastic figure. I'm going to leave some links in the description below that hopefully still have it in stock by the time you check them and are ready to purchase. I was like fortunate enough to buy this late and still, you know, people had it in stock. So yeah, hopefully you can get it too. He looks great even as a mercenary figure. I think if you don't know Cable too much, I only know the basics. Like I said, um, you might have a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 collection that you're doing. It fits in right, right with that, right? Um, so I'm really looking forward to what Revotech do for the next Marvel figure and even their DC figure as well because they have done a couple of those. I think Muffix overall are still the better look for me, but I can't deny that yes, the Rebel Tech Marvel stuff that I've got so far has been pretty fun uh, to pose and fun in their own right and good to look at and good looking in their own right as well. Not for everyone, but I enjoy them. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you stay safe wherever you are and have a happy new year in 2021.